Okay, here we're going to be looking at cloning with the Easy Clone, which is a commercially available uh, product. In this case, this is the Easy Clone Low Pro 64, meaning that it will clone up to 64 cuttings at one time. It's a form of aeroponic propagation here, and we'll go through just some of the basics of this. So some growers have a love-hate relationship with the Easy Clone. It can be very efficient. Put in quotes here, it can be the best system if there's attention to detail by the grower. So some people see this easy clone as just too intricate, too much detail, kind of like the small gears in a watch here, uh, and too difficult to figure out. So I'm here to shed some light on what it takes to actually use this properly. Uh, the key part is to optimize the easy clone conditions, with pH being the first priority. Knowing the pH and maintaining is very important. Uh, if the pH is not monitored, this is typically a result of poor to non-existent rooting. Example here, a pH of 4.96. I'll be much too acidic, and this would lead to poor rooting. So I think this is where a lot of people go wrong with the Easy Clone, is they're just not monitoring or aware of what the pH is in the environment. Uh, managing heat is another issue. So location of cloners is, is placed can contribute to the reservoir heat. This is the pump, the water pump that's used, and this is the spray bar. This pump also does generate some heat, so that's important to keep in mind. But a slightly warmer water temp is advantageous, but only to a certain point. So it's good that there's a little heat generated, but if it's already in the warm environment, that could cause uh, some issues here. Uh, an area that may only have bottom heat will only exacerbate the problem. So you want to just be mindful of the area you're putting it in, knowing that this pump will still produce a little bit of heat. Blue Labs, uh, the Blue Lab Guardian Monitor here is a great all-in-one tool. You can monitor the EC, which is the dissolved solids. Uh, in this case, I have it in parts per million. You can also monitor the temperature. It can go from Fahrenheit or Celsius, and also the pH here. And this can also, um, there's options to be linked to remote devices, so you don't even have to be present to watch it. Uh, this is a standalone unit in the image here. What to add to the reservoir? So plain water can work. Uh, nutrient solutions can also help speed up the rooting. Uh, two popular products are the Clonex solution pictured here and also Olivia's solution. Now, which rooting solution uh, to use? Well, I've run trials on both, and the Clonex takes an extra day or so to root in comparison to the Olivia's. Olivia does root the quickest. However, the Clonex is pH stable, while Olivia's does require almost daily attention to monitor uh, and maintain a proper pH. Clonex, based on the recommended use by the manufacturer, does cost less. Olivia's is slightly more expensive. Clonex does produce a clean solution that's very pump and filter friendly, while the Olivia's does have leftover particulate which can clog a filter if you use it over time and don't take that step uh, of cleaning that on a regular schedule. Humidity control and easy clone, so it can run without extra humidity added, which is great. Uh, this is if the lighting's not too intense and the heat is kept to a minimum. So in certain instances, it may be uh, necessary to kind of add some misting system if it's already in a warm environment. But watch the amount and size of the water droplets you use, because it is possible to unintentionally overfill the reservoir, stopping the continual water spray of the aeroponics that's needed to keep that uh, rooting environment going. This is why you see examples here of the plastic bag over it to help water sheet away and not get caught in the cloner and overfilling it. Uh, this is just a result of the environment that it was placed in. Again, you want to eliminate water from unintentionally being entered, but if you're not adding extra humidity or mist, this shouldn't be a problem. How long should you leave uh, your cuttings in the cloner? Well, you want to see till the roots emerge. While plants can grow in the system, once roots are about the width of the supporting foam, uh, they should be removed. So at this point, this would be a great time to remove these cuttings. Sometimes you'll have some that root earlier and some that root later. The advantage of this system is you can remove individual uh, clones when you feel they're ready. Lastly, the basic setup. Uh, while this is in a greenhouse, since cuttings do not need full sun, this is not a requirement. A uh, misting system, this misting bar here was used to the heat because it was in the greenhouse. But also notice that the electrical outlets located up here in the monitor are kept above the mist bar, keeping them out of this high mist environment and only keeping the cloner in that misting environment here to eliminate the stress on the seedlings.